today we will be talking about energy metabolism. The macronutrients in alcohol are rich sources of energy, but they are not in a form that the body can use. So the body must break down these energy yielding compounds to release and convert their chemical energy to the form that the body can use. This process is called energy metabolism. It is the multi-step series of energy transforming chemical reactions. Energy metabolism occurs in all cells every moment of every day for your entire lifetime. Metabolism is the chemical processes that are involved in maintaining life. It is composed of the chemical reactions that occur within the body. Some of the reactions allow us to release energy from carbohydrate, fat, protein, and alcohol to synthesize new substances and excrete waste products. The metabolic pathway is a group of reactions that occur in a progression from beginning to end. Any compound that is formed during the steps in a metabolic pathway is called an intermediate. All of the metabolic pathways within the body can be classified as anabolic or catabolic. Anabolic pathways use small compounds like glucose, fatty acids, cholesterol, and amino acids to build larger compounds. We have previously discussed how the body breaks down the food you eat to get to these smaller compounds through digestion and absorption. Anabolic pathways take these building blocks and synthesize glycogen, hormones, enzymes, and other proteins, which keep the body functions growing and developing. This pathway requires energy and is used more during periods of growth because more tissue is being made than broken down. Catabolic pathways break down compounds into smaller units. We have previously talked about how the storage form of glucose is called glycogen and it is found in the liver and in the muscles in your body. If we needed glucose molecules, the catabolic pathway would be used to break down glycogen to form many single units of glucose. Whenever these larger compounds are broken apart, carbon dioxide is released as well as water and energy. Catabolic pathways is used more during periods of weight loss or diseases like cancer because more tissue is being broke down than made. If we look at this picture of anabolic and catabolic reactions, you can see how compounds are broken down and synthesized. For example, under the anabolic reaction, we have two glucose molecules, which are going to be combined to form glycogen using ATP. That same glycogen molecule will be broken down during catabolic reactions to produce energy and form two single glucose molecules. This can also be done with triglycerides and protein. If we're looking at anabolic reactions, we have two single amino acids, ATP is added, and then we form protein. The catabolic reactions that produce energy is getting rid of that ATP as energy and then breaking it down to two single amino acids. The series of catabolic reactions, which produce energy and break molecules apart, begins with digestion and continues with monosaccharides, amino acids, fatty acids, glycerol, and alcohol. Energy is captured as ATP in heat, carbon dioxide, and water is released. Adenosine triphosphate, known as ATP, is the main form of energy that our bodies use. The heat produced helps maintain body temperature. Only the energy found in ATP can be used directly by cells to synthesize new compounds, which remember is an anabolic pathway to contract muscles, conduct nerve impulses, and pump ions across membranes. A single molecule of ATP consists of the organic compound adenosine bound to three phosphate groups. These bonds are considered high energy phosphate bonds because of the energy stored in each bond. Hy hydrolysis of these bonds releases the energy stored. So once the cells break a high energy phosphate bond, adenosine diphosphate, known as ADP, is created in addition to a free phosphate group. If hydrolysis occurs again on a high energy phosphate bond, adenosine monophosphate, AMP, is formed. This picture is showing you what ATP looks like. 
Here you have the organic compound adenine connected to a ribose sugar to form adenosine. So this is your adenosine portion. The adenosine is connected to three high energy phosphate bonds that once broken produce energy because the bonds between them are what produce energy. So here's your three phosphates in between here is your high energy phosphate bonds. ATP is regenerated by adding phosphate back to AMP and ADP. The energy released during catabolism allows phosphate to reform a high energy bond with AMP and ADP, which will form ATP because AMP contains one phosphate and ADP contains two phosphates. To form ATP, you need three phosphates. The synthesis of ATP from ADP in inorganic phosphate involves the exchange of electrons in the form of hydrogen ions from energy yielding nutrients, which includes carbohydrate, fat, protein, and alcohol. This process uses oxidation reduction reactions, which is when electrons are transferred in a series of reactions from those energy yielding compounds to oxygen. The reaction forms water and also releases energy to produce ATP. A substance is oxidized when it loses one or more electrons or gains oxygen. A substance is reduced when it gains electrons or loses oxygen. If a substance loses electrons, which is oxidized, then another substance will gain those electrons, which is reduced. These two reactions occur together because another substance must gain the electrons that are lost and vice versa. Enzymes are what is in control of oxidation reduction reactions in the body. Dehydrogenases remove hydrogens from energy yielding compounds and those same hydrogens are donated to oxygen to form water. Throughout this process, a large amount of energy is converted to ATP. Niacin and riboflavin are B vitamins that are key players in energy metabolism. They assist dehydrogenase enzymes and play a role in transferring the hydrogens from energy yielding compounds to oxygen in the met metabolic pathways of the cell. Niacin functions as the coenzyme nicotinamine adenine dinucleotide, or NAD. NAD is the oxidized form because it has lost a hydrogen and NADH is the reduced form because it has gained a hydrogen. During intense exercise, lactate dehydrogenase reduces pyruvate to form lactate. Pyruvate is what is formed when glucose is broken down through glycolysis and we will be talking about glycolysis in a few slides. During the reduction of pyruvate, two hydrogens are gained. Lactate can be oxidized back to pyruvate by losing two hydrogens. These hydrogens go to the NAD+. The plus on the NAD+, shows that it has one less electron than it in its reduced form. The extra hydrogen ion remains free in the cell. This causes no net charge on the coenzyme. Riboflavin plays a similar role. In the oxidized form, the coenzyme form is known as flavin adenine dinucleotide, or FAD. When it is reduced, it gains two hydrogens and is known as FADH2. The reduction of oxygen to form water is the driving force for life because it is vital for the way cells synthesize ATP. Oxidation reduction reactions are key to life. ATP can be produced from carbohydrates. ATP is generated through cellular respiration. This process oxidizes, which means it removes electrons from food molecules to obtain energy as ATP. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor. There are two different pathways for cellular respiration. Aerobic is when oxygen is readily available. Aerobic respiration is more efficient than anaerobic metabolism at producing ATP. A single molecule of glucose creates 30 to 32 ATP. 
Anaerobic respiration is when oxygen is not present. During anaerobic respiration, only two molecules of ATP are created. Here are four stages of aerobic cellular respiration of glucose. The first stage is glycolysis. This pathway takes the six carbon molecule glucose and forms two molecules of the three carbon molecule pyruvate. So when you see the term pyruvate, remember that it came from a single glucose molecule that was split into two. This occurs in the cytosol of the cell. The second stage is the transition reaction. This reaction converts two molecules of the three carbon molecule pyruvate into two molecules of the two carbon molecule acetyl-CoA. NADH in hydrogen positive and carbon dioxide are released during this process. This reaction is transitioning from the cytosol into the mitochondria where this reaction is occurring, hence the name transition reaction. The third stage is the citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle. In this pathway, acetyl-CoA enters the citric acid cycle which results in the production of NADH and H positive, FADH2, and ATP. Carbon dioxide is released as a waste product. This also occurs in the mitochondria of the cell. Stage 4 is the electron transport chain. The NADH and hydrogen produced by the first three stages and the FADH2 produced in the third stage enter the electron transport chain. NADH in hydrogen is oxidized to NAD+, and FADH2 is oxidized to FAD. Remember that oxidized means to gain oxygen and lose hydrogen, which can be seen by the loss of hydrogen in the names. At the end of the electron transport chain, Oxygen is combined with the hydrogen ions and electrons to form water. Most ATP is formed in the electron transport chain, which is why the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. This is where the energy is formed. Glycolysis has two roles, to break down carbohydrates to generate energy and to provide building blocks for synthesizing other needed compounds. During glycolysis, pyruvate is formed. The six carbon molecule glucose is split to form two three carbon molecules called pyruvate. Initially, glycolysis requires two ATPs. However, it generates four ATP, so this gives you a net of two ATP. When oxygen is present, the pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex converts the three carbon molecule pyruvate into a two carbon molecule called acetyl-CoA. This takes place in the mitochondria and is known as a transition reaction. The transition reaction is irreversible, which means that acetyl-CoA cannot be converted back into glucose. The acetyl-CoA molecules that are produced in the transition reaction enter the citric acid cycle. This is also known as the Krebs cycle. The citric acid cycle is a series of reactions that cells use to convert the carbons of an acetyl group to carbon dioxide while harvesting energy to create ATP. It takes two turns of the citric acid cycle to process one glucose molecule. This is because glycolysis and the transition reaction yield two acetyl-CoA. Each complete turn of the citric acid cycle form two molecules of carbon dioxide and one potential ATP as guanosine triphosphate or GTP. Three molecules of NADH plus a positive hydrogen and one molecule of FADH2 are also produced. Oxygen is not required in any step in the citric acid cycle. The electron transport chain is the final pathway for aerobic respiration. This occurs in the mitochondria of the cell. For cells that need a lot of ATP, like muscle cells, there are thousands of mitochondria. For cells that need little ATP, like adipose tissue, 
there is very little mitochondria. 90% of the ATP produced from the breakdown of glucose is produced in the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain involves the passage of electrons along a series of electron carriers. As electrons are passed from one carrier to the next, small amounts of energy are released. NADH plus a positive hydrogen and FADH2 supply both hydrogen ions and electrons to the electron transport chain. The term oxidative phosphorylation is used for this metabolic process. The energy derived from NADH plus a positive hydrogen and FADH2 is transferred to ADP plus a phosphate to form ATP. This process requires the minerals copper and iron because iron is a component of the cytochromes, which is the electron transfer compounds, and copper is a component of an enzyme. Oxygen is essential for energy metabolism to continue because without oxygen, metabolism stops and death occurs. Here is the explanation. NADH plus a positive hydrogen and FADH2 that is produced during the citric acid cycle can be regenerated into NAD and FAD only by the eventual transfer of their electrons and hydrogen ions to oxygen. The citric acid cycle has no ability to oxidize NADH plus the positive hydrogen and FADH2 back to NAD and FAD. This is why oxygen is crucial to many life forms. It is the final acceptor of the electrons and hydrogen ions. Without oxygen, most of our cells are unable to extract enough energy from the energy yielding nutrients to sustain life. Anaerobic metabolism takes place when cells do not have mitochondria, which means they cannot complete aerobic metabolism, or when cells with mitochondria do not have oxygen present to complete aerobic metabolism. When oxygen is lacking, pyruvate that is produced through glycolysis is converted into lactate. Anaerobic metabolism is not as efficient as aerobic respiration because it only converts about 5% of energy and molecules of glucose to energy stores in the high energy phosphate bonds of ATP. The one-step reaction involves a simple transfer of hydrogen from NADH plus the positive hydrogen to pyruvate to form lactate and NAD+. The synthesis of lactate regenerates the NAD+, required for the continued function of glycolysis. Even though muscle cells have mitochondria, during high-intensity exercise, they rely heavily on anaerobic glycolysis to quickly produce ATP. Anaerobic glycolysis causes lactate accumulations and NAD plus regeneration, both of which allow anaerobic glycolysis to continue in the muscle. The lactate is transferred to the liver where it gets converted back to glucose, which can be returned to the muscles.